Today I'm going to talk about the three must-haves if you're new to off-roading. Stick around. What's up y'all? Welcome back to the channel. My name's Clint. The stuff we're going to be talking about today isn't necessarily Jeep specific. It applies to anyone that goes off-road. But since this is a Jeep channel, that's how we're going to refer to it. So, you just got your first Jeep. You are super excited. Maybe a new Jeep, may just be a new to you Jeep, but it's your first Jeep. You've joined all the Facebook pages, you've joined all the Facebook groups, you're following their posts and you think, man, I'd like to try that. Well, there's a couple things you should do first. First thing is you should get in contact with the local group or local club to get some insight on the types of places that you have to go off-road in your local area. Facebook is a great way to identify or to find these groups and pages and clubs. The second thing you should do is try to go on a ride along. Not even take your Jeep the first time. Ask somebody in that local group or club or whatever it is if you could ride along with them for the first time just so you can have an idea when what it looks like when you take your Jeep out there. I've seen it many times the first time off-roader they'll go out and they're all excited and they're happy they're like, all right we're gonna go do this and you know you, everybody wants to start off easy and then the first time you get to something that you think oh I'm not real comfortable with this eh, then they kind of back up and I've had several people say yep nope I'm good <laughs> and that's just the way it goes your confidence level and your confidence in what your Jeep can do are nil you just you don't know what you can do and you don't have any idea what your Jeep can do. Two cardinal rules you should follow as a Jeep enthusiast. Number one, never ever wheel alone. Number two, tread lightly. Tread lightly. If you've never heard of Tread Lightly, it's an actual organization that promotes responsible off-roading. Meaning, don't tear people's property up, take all your garbage with you, pick up any garbage you you find on the trails it's just responsible off-roading and we're helping maintain this stuff for future off-roaders now to get down to the actual topic of this video there's three things that i think the first time off-roader really should have before they even attempt to go out on the trails the first is some type of tire deflator here i'm showing you two examples this one is my favorite of the two the way this works, you screw this end down onto your valve stem. Once you've got it screwed on tight, then you take this one and you unscrew your valve stem. Once your valve stem is unscrewed, it'll pop up like that. So your valve stem is all the way out. Then to deflate, all you do is raise this up and it'll let air out of your tire very quickly. Then using the gauge, once you've aired down to the pressure that you want, you just push this down, screw it back in until you feel the valve stem get seated. Then unscrew this and take it off. You're done. The second example I have here are little caps like this. I'm not really a fan of these. They do work. The selling point to these is that you can put them on and turn them on and just walk away. Very rarely are they ever accurate. Um, they can, I've seen some times where they don't stop where you had set them to stop and you come back 10 minutes later and you've got a flat tire. That's an extreme example, but it can happen. It's very tough to get them all to work correctly. So, but it is an option. With these two, you have several different options as far as manufacturers. There are a bunch of different companies that make both of these. If you're interested in either one of these two, I will have links to them in the description. All right, now you've got your tires aired down. What's the next thing that I think you should have as a new off-roader? That's gonna be some type of recovery gear. And by recovery gear, I mean the basic stuff that you're gonna need is a tree saver, a toe strap, a snatch rope, a snatch block. Not necessarily a winch. Winch is a high dollar item and more than likely somebody in your group's going to have one. But as long as you have the basic recovery gear to help use with that winch, you're going to be in good shape. And most people are going to appreciate that. The off-road community is really good about helping one another out. And we, we all know what the expense is. So as long as you have the gear, somebody in the group with a winch isn't going to 
isn't going to mind helping you out. And that's the way we work together anyway. So let me show you what I have. This is a basic recovery kit from Gear America. It comes with a nice, real heavy duty bag that has reflective material on it. Tree saver on this side. Thirty foot toe strap on that side. Open the bag up. This pocket you have shackles. Here's a nine ton snatch block. And some gloves. You always want to have gloves, especially if you have steel cable on the winch line. Got to have these gloves. This right here is a real nice basic kit. It's going to have just about everything you're going to need to assist in your own recovery or the recovery of somebody in your group. Now a couple of things that you can add to your kit, which I have, but they're in my go box and I'm not digging them out right now. Soft shackles. They basically work the same way as your standard steel D-ring, but they're a whole lot lighter. They're quicker to throw together. Um, just be careful how you use them. Kinetic rope, you'll use that for pretty minor issues. Um, somebody's just in a little mud hole that they're just spinning, can't get any traction. You'll hook that kinetic rope up. You'll use that rather than a toe strap. Toe strap you only want to use if you're just pulling somebody. Somebody's broke. They can't get under power. They can't get out under their own power. Use that toe strap. Tow them out to the trailhead or the parking area or wherever it is that you need to get them to. That's what you use a toe strap for. A kinetic rope, it, it stretches, right? You really don't want to use a toe strap and try to snatch somebody out of a mud hole. You want to use that kinetic rope. It's easier on your vehicle and it's easier on the stuck vehicle. And as it stretches, when it snaps back, it helps give you a little more force. Good quality kinetic ropes, anywhere from 7 8 diameter to 1 inch, 20 to 30 feet long, they're kind of expensive. They're going to run anywhere in the 140 to $200 range. So you might put that on the back burner to start with. But a basic recovery kit like this, I think it's going to run around 130, 140 bucks, something like that. And I'll have a link to this kit in the description as well. So you've had a great day wheeling. You've done things you never would have imagined you or your Jeep could do. You're all excited. You're back at the trailhead. Now you got to air back up. Most places don't have any place that you can air back up accessible. I'm sure you'll meet people in the group and on the Facebook pages that are, you're going to hear the term onboard air. And all that means is they've got a small air compressor hooked up to their battery and they've got plumbing run in their Jeep somewhere. All they got to do is flip a switch, their air compressor comes on. They can run a line out to their tires and air their tires back up. That's a great convenient option and it's always there. Can be a little bit expensive though. And depending on where you put it, it can be a hassle to put in. So there's a couple different options. You can have a portable air compressor like what I have and I'll show it to you here in a minute. You just hook the alligator clips up to the battery, that provides power, turn it on, run a line to your tires. The new thing out, and it's not new, it's been around for a little while, you can get a power tank or Smitty Built makes it smaller and what it is is a CO2 tank. It's much quicker than compressed air. You can air up four 37 inch tires in about five minutes. Where with my compressor, it's going to take me about 30. But a power tank's going to run you 600 bucks or more, depending on what you get and the accessories you get with it. This little air compressor I have here, I think it was 120 bucks. So let me show it to you. This is a 1.6 CFM portable compressor by Smitty Built. This, does, this blue hose does not come with it. Nor does this. What does come with it is the pump, this inflation gauge, this hose, and the bag of course. Take your alligator clips, hook them up to your battery, positive and negative, turn the switch on, you've got air. What comes with it is adequate. This hose works, but I've actually modified this 
so that I don't even use this anymore. These aren't standard size connectors. I've gone and bought a new insert to go in the hose here so I could use a quarter inch coupler, quick disconnect coupler. And then I bought some 3 8 inch hose to go with it. And this gauge. The gauge that comes with this is nowhere even close to accurate. I am not sponsored by any of the companies that make any of the products I've shown you today, nor are any of these companies sponsoring this video. I just wanted to show you guys what I have. So there are my suggestions for the top three must-haves the new off-roader needs. If you have any questions about any of these products, I've used all of them many times. Hit me up in the comments. Let me know. For your more seasoned off-roaders, if you have any suggestions, throw them in the comments too, man. I'd like to hear them. Y'all, I hope you liked this video. Hope you found it informative and somewhat entertaining. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Till the next time, keep the shiny side up and Jeep on.